2008 U.S. Sport Aviation Expo, obviously one of the main stars here has to be Cessna. Cessna has revitalized a lot of interest in LSA with the announcement of the 162 Skycatcher. At the same time, a little controversy arose when they made a decision to build the airplane in, in part in China. While a lot of the components, uh, Teledyne's engine, Garmin's panel, and a lot of equipment is going to come from the United States and produce a lot of jobs here in the States, there will be some assembly in China and final assembly back in three locations in the U.S. The question of whether or not the market will bear it is being answered here because while there are some folks who really like to see it built elsewhere, the main uh, response to anybody who comes out tries, out, tries it out, gets inside, finds out they've got headroom and legroom and a beautiful little panel and a neat stick and everything else is three words. I want one. Neil, first of all, welcome to Aero TV and thanks for spending a little bit of time here in a surprisingly spacious cabin for what is a basic aircraft. I'm, I'm kind of surprised. We're shoulder to shoulder. Mm -hmm. Nobody's going to have to announce their engagement afterwards. So I've mm -hmm. got plenty of headroom and plenty of legroom. Mm -hmm. Nice job. Well, great, thanks. Well, Neil, let's let's uh, broach on a subject that's gotten a little bit of a buzz of late. Mm -hmm. uh, Cessna, of course, is trying its best to provide an LSA that, one, meets the mission, mm -hmm. and two, is affordable to all. Mm -hmm. And the problem is, in this day and age, that required some compromises. And the compromise in this particular case means some assembly in China. Mm -hmm. um, there are some folks that doesn't sit well with, and there are some folks who are just overjoyed that this thing doesn't cost one hundred seventy to one hundred eighty thousand dollars. Aero TV is brought to you by Cirrus aircraft have always been easy to fly. Now they're easier than ever to buy. A complete line of ownership programs gives you everything you need to purchase, trade, finance, lease, insure, and warranty your Cirrus. There's even an ownership program for non-pilots. The Cirrus Access Pilot can teach you how to fly or fly the plane for you. Find out more at www.cirrusdesign.com. Cirrus, for the love of flying. Now, back to Aero TV. Well, when we, as we worked the business case, we looked at what it would take to, to build the airplane uh, either in the U.S. or some foreign built, some uh, domestic, and we knew we had to be competitive with, with other LSA manufacturers, but we also, as a company, know what it takes to really be in the business and, and have good product support and good networks of uh, whether it's parts or service. And so we carefully worked through everything, and, and we saw, as I think as other manufacturers have found, that we needed to look internationally. Let's look at a couple of scenarios here. If, if you had done this in the United States, as mm -hmm. I understand, the rumors suggest $170,000 to $180,000 to build this mm -hmm. Is that correct? I couldn't tell you for sure because I don't know the yeah. exact differences, but uh, it would certainly be more than what, it, yeah. what we're doing today. Aero TV is brought to you by... Today, there is an affordable, high-performance, easy-to-own, and easy-to-operate, very light jet designed with you in mind. Far less expensive than any other twin-engine jet to buy, it is also the least expensive to own and operate. It is the Eclipse 500, the jet that's easy to buy, easy to fly, and fun to own. The jet for you. Now, back to Aero TV. Most of the componentry, all the major componentry mm -hmm. and all the major dollars are still coming out of the U.S., correct? Right. Yeah. Again, the materials are um, purchased from U.S. companies that make them. Uh, many of the major vendor, the suppliers, you know, the product is being uh, shipped over there and then uh, like the Continental and the Garmin and, mm -hmm. and then they'll uh, fly it and ship it back. And then you've got three service centers here in the mm -hmm. United States that'll do the final assembly, test fly, and hand it over to folks who want to go play. That's right. Outstanding. And of course, the other thing too, keep it. You know, I'm trying to take the one side of this right now. Mm -hmm. but, you know, there's there's so many things that add, do argue for it because it was an either or. Either you mm -hmm. had the airplane or you didn't, right. based on the decisions that were made. But mm -hmm. ultimately, also, this means hundreds of jobs for the U.S., doesn't it? Right. Because especially, you know, one of the main reasons. When we were looking at this a few years ago, getting in was the fact that the flight training has it, gotten so expensive. We needed a low cost 150, right. 152 type airplane. I learned to fly in a 150, and you know it's, it was certainly cheap. And even then, it was an old airplane when I learned. But yeah. 
to lower the cost to get people into aviation. So there you have it, the decisions, the information, everything that came into making the Skycatcher decision, and then of course the decision to work in China. It's a very good business decision for Cessna because one, you now have an airplane that instead of costing 170 to 180,000, it's going to tip a little bit over 100,000 and make it far more affordable to uh, you know, mom and dad six pack out there who are trying to have their very first airplane or something that they can afford finally where they couldn't in the past. So that's a good decision there. Plus the fact that that market out there is huge. Cessna will sell hundreds and eventually thousands of airplanes into that market. It's hungry for general aviation, so it makes sense. Ultimately, it came down to two decisions. Do you build it or do you not build it? And un unfortunately, with the way things are right now, with, with the costs and so forth in the U.S., it just wasn't a good economic decision, and going overseas allowed them to build this airplane. And the market right now seems to be responding positively. By and large, sweet little airplane, good ideas, and of course, Cessna design, engineering, and styling. And uh, ultimately, with almost a thousand orders on the books, uh, the airplane's a success before it even takes to the sky. For the Aero News Network and for Aero TV, I'm Jim Campbell.